Hey, what's up, witches? It's me, Luna. Pre-lighting my charcoal, what a great idea, huh? Uh, in order to do an unboxing video. And um, how can you tell what time it is? Because it's within an hour of T-R-E-A-T -E time and you see all three of the boys. There's Pie Wacket, Pie Wacket, there's Gibby, and there's Mitchell. Uh, they are gathering for a very special unboxing because this is a gift unboxing. And I want to say thank you um, to my patrons. Thank you to you, my subscribers. I just passed 2,000 subscribers. And most especially, thank you to Drew McKinney for this wonderful gift. And I apologize that it's taken me a while to get uh, the video up because um, the deck, when it arrived, was damaged. The box was damaged and, you know, Amazon puts them in those padded mailers and then they tossed them around and the box got torn. And the reason that I had this desk deck on my desk and on my list, even though I have the deck, is that my original, <laughs> my original deck, uh, the box has been long, long gone. I got this in the early 90s. So this is a great opportunity to unbox it and also to do a side-by-side -side of the Robin Wood Tarot. My uh, number two deck in my uh, professional reading career. Number one was Hanson Roberts. This was number two. Cosmic was number three. And if I would go stale with Hanson Roberts, then I would switch to this one and and that's always you know a good reason to have more than one deck particularly if you read professionally is that at times or even reading for yourself at times things just go stale and you need a refresher and a new deck can do exactly that all right so here we have an undamaged box how wonderful is that and except that i just damaged it where i tore the plastic off all right, well, wabi-sabi, right? So the Robin Wood Tarot. And uh, truthfully, I do not remember if this was the style of box that the original came in. I think it was. Um, it's a Llewellyn deck from way back in the day. Okay, it doesn't have it on the outside. Let's just open up. So we have the kind of different tuck box. There's the little white book, and you can see my grungy little white book. Ooh, there's a zippy tie. Hold on. Not a zip tie. You know what I mean. The thing what opens it. That I can see it's there. Is that it? <gasps> Yay. <laughs> Something got easy. All right. Deplasticed. Okay. So let's put them, um, let's just start doing a little side-by-side -side comparison here. The original, and you can see this one is grungematic. It's had a lot of use. The cardstock is very cardboardy. Um, you know, it's not really matte, it's not shiny, it's not any finish but cardboard finish. These, you can see, are a little more shiny. They're a little, ooh. Did you hear that? <gasps> That's because they were stuck together. A little, a little more substantial, but not stiff. Um, let's look at the backs side by side. So you can see, you know, see the glossiness. This one has a little bit uh, more saturated color, but it's exactly the same color. So we don't have a difference in um, in hue, and that's a good thing. But Let's see here. No, it seems like only those first two were kind of stuck and crunchy. All right. So this deck is uh, based on the Waitsmith deck. And it just, uh, it takes it into the pagan zone. And it's funny, I've had this deck for so long that I consider it just standard tarot. But it does have pagan underpinnings, which is why I was attracted to it to begin with. Um, let's zoom in. So here we have the Fool. And 
as with my original copy, we have very rich coloration. Um, this deck has a bright uh, daytime feel to it, as opposed to, for instance, the Cosmic, which has a very nighttime feel. I'm looking for my Fool card right now. Um, you know what? I'm going to pull the High Priestess because I know she's coming up, and we'll compare her. So here we have the Fool with the little puppy dog. I love the um, rainbow colored ribbons tied onto his pack so we have the colors of all the elements and spirit and the little butterflies. The color and the saturation is just different enough that I, I'm finding it's, you know, I'm seeing some new things already. Here's the magician. I like the, um, the closeness of this deck and you see by the shadows they're pretty stark, so you get a very um, intense light. See this intense light coming from this direction? And here's something I've never noticed. Look at the black and white candles behind him that echo the High Priestess in the Waitsmith deck. Seeing the lilies on his gown, and yet the High Priestess in this deck does not have towers but she has trees there's a black tree and a white tree much more subtle but look I mean there's the only difference really is the color saturation and that's that's great I love it okay so here's the high priestess she's got a crystal ball in her hand you see the moon on her brow the what is that is that a pentacle you know I've never noticed hold on <laughs> That is, yes, that is a pentacle on her necklace. Again, never noticed it before. Here's the empress, obviously pregnant. Some, you know, there's a whole lot of decks that kind of dodge that or they show, you know, just a bit or maybe, but I love that this shows honest, full-blown pregnancy and that she's sitting and spinning so here's the Empress. She takes basic resources and she nurtures them into form, you know? You can look at the Empress and the Emperor as the force and the form, God and Goddess. He is um, the force, the activating principle, and she takes that force and brings it into a form. So we have like, I mean, if you think about growing like flax, and or cotton and then taking it and spinning those fibers into yarn, weaving the, that yarn into cloth, sewing that cloth into clothing. That's the Empress. And again, the Emperor. So we have, you know, echoes of things we're familiar with, like the ram's head here. The fact that he's sitting full frontal. And we have like crows or ravens uh, on either side of his head. And here's the Hierophant. This one is very churchy, which is kind of interesting in a, in a pagan slanted deck um, to have a figure from the church here. But that also really points up what he can represent. He can represent teachings, indoctrination, training, um, sometimes, you know, like academic learning, stuff like that. But he can also represent dogma and mystery, which is don't ask. We know, and we're not going to tell you so, don't ask, rather than mystery, which is um, things that can be learned but can't be taught. Okay. Here are the lovers. First deck I ever had that showed peen. What a thrill that is, huh? <laughs> Looky, both, both, both genders, both sexes have nakedness <laughs> and sacredness. Here's the chariot with the white and black horses. I love that unicorns, actually. And he has a harp and he is singing. So this deck adds to uh, the Waitsmith and, you know, the Hanson Roberts that I love so much. Here's strength. Look at her face. She is loving this animal into um, 
into tameness. So it's about loving self-control, not browbeating. Here's the hermit. I love this image. I love the rays coming out of that lantern. And the Wheel of Fortune is very interesting and a, and a you know, kind of a departure because um, usually we see, you know, in some decks there's like the demon and the snake going up and down either side um, or just the wheel, you know, sometimes with the four fixed signs. But here we see people and we see the range from absolute ecstasy and joy to kind of going down to abject grief and then back up again. So it does, and look at this little ball traveling around like a roulette wheel, just reminding us that this is the natural way of life, cycles, ups and downs. Here's justice. Very simple, uh, very strong statement. The sword of truth upraised and the scales that keep everyone equal. Um, here's the hanged man. I love the, the light around his head and his puffy shirt, you know, puffy shirt and tights. It's awesome. This is a beautiful death card. That blood red color and the white rose. Got a butterfly, a symbol of transformation. And this, oh, interesting, That that is a flag. That white rose is on a flag and that's the staff of the flag. You know what? I'm going to take a look and see if that's mentioned. Nope. So I know there's a book for this too, and I think I'm going to have to, to purchase it. Here's temperance, and rather than pouring, he's juggling these spheres. Very interesting. I love this devil card as well, because these people are stuck, but it, it all they have to do is let go of the fucking chest full of riches. Now, um, there was a, a thing called the monkey trap. Don't know where this came from, but the idea is that you take a box and you cut a hole that's just big enough for the monkey to get its paw in. You put a banana in the box and the monkey reaches in and grabs the banana, but can't get it back out of the box. And then he's trapped because he refuses to let go of the banana. That's the monkey trap. Just let go of the fucking banana, you guys. Here's the tower. I love the gray scale, the tossed water, lightning clouds. <clears throat> Here's the star. Looking very beautiful, the moon. Look at that tiny crayfish. We got a wolf and a dog, so standard. The two standing stones. And the sun, a naked baby on a pony. Yippee! This judgment card, too, is absolutely glorious. Um, she is rising up out of that cauldron, reborn. Look at the phoenix. Put me through the fire, and the only thing that will burn is my false self. Yeah. And here's the world. So we don't have... Um, well, okay, so what we have in this card... Thank you so much, Drew. This is making me look at this deck again for the first time closely in a long time. We don't have the four symbols of the fixed signs. What we have is the elements. We have air here with the clouds. We have earth with mountains. We have water with the ocean and fire. Never noticed that before. And here she comes bursting through with her wands. Then we have the King of Pentacles. He is so jolly, you know? Come to him, yes. Sure, I'll lend you that money. What do you need? And here's the Queen. Now she is looking pregnant as well. You can see the belt as she should. You know, as she should according to the standard. Look at the rabbit, fertility. And here's the knight that doesn't go anywhere. Standing still, slow and methodical, practical. And then there's the page, ready to learn in very practical terms. This can be hands-on learning. Then we have the 10. 
And unlike other Ten of Pentacles where people, I think it was in Rachel Pollock's book that I was reading, where the people in the card are not engaging with each other. They're all looking in different directions. This card has them very closely engaging with each other. Three generations. There's the nine. Solitary wealth. Um, kind of pulling back solitude and seclusion, um, abundance that you are able to have and create what you need for yourself by yourself. There's the apprentice card. I like that it shows a boy here, a young boy. And here's the seven. I've worked hard. It's bearing fruit. Unlike the Hanson Roberts were and and the. Um, original Wade Smith where this person is looking exhausted which would always cause me to say everything's bearing fruit but you're too exhausted to enjoy it this card tells me something different and here's the six resources that aren't worked for loans and debts destitution out in the cold very graphically depicted and again up close you know, here's the four. The important parts of this court card, the one on top of the head, both arms involved, both feet holding them down. He's immobilized by his grasping nature. Mastery. This is who that apprentice is learning from. Juggling, not just juggling, but walking a tightrope. And look at how the ships are on the air. Usually we see ships in the background on the water getting tossed around. And so that always told me about a juggling of resources and the upheaval of emotions that go with it, that goes with it. And here we've got these in the air. So it's talking about thoughts that, you know, what causes the upheaval is possibly where our thoughts are going about our resources. And there's the ace. It's beautiful. The path and the column there that I never noticed before. There he is, the bastard, a.k.a. the motherfucker, the knight, the king of swords. Look at him. Judgmental, rigid, uh, very Aquarian, very um, brilliant intellectually, but also very attached to those ideas. And there's the queen. I love her robes. <clears throat> Looking out with discernment. Look at the rays of light. It's the brightness of the intellect. And looking at things intellectually. Here's the knight of swords. Going after it. And the page. I love the motion in this deck as well. Um, one of the things this deck does when I'm reading in a grid, you know, a three by three, is that you get to see which direction things are heading. And I have had this deck come out with like absolutely symmetrical layouts before. It's amazing. There's the Ten of Swords. No doubt that it's total loss. And as the Waitsmith, very similar, but zoomed in. This deck zooms in on those scenes from the Waitsmith. Here's the Eight of Swords. And the Thief. I mean, there's just no doubt what's going on. So I would even say that this deck takes it a little bit farther than the Hanson Roberts in, you know, showing what's going on with the people. This is an interesting one, too. The Six of Swords uh, navigating, making your way through difficult times across, you know, treacherous waters, treacherous seas. But look who's steering the boat. It's a ghost. So... Wow, I mean, a lot can be read into that. Again, things that I've never noticed. Thank you again. And I think as, you know, as my collecting kind of slows down a little bit, that this is probably where I, I'm going to head, is pulling out some of my older decks and revisiting things that have become too familiar. There's the five. <laughs> the four. Rest after battle. Mm. 
so very clear. There's the two. I love the dark, 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 stormy skies. And the ace. And the brightness of the ace showing the sword of truth cutting through illusion. Clear thinking. Then we got the king of wands and the queen. So happy and sunny. And here's the knight. Look at the flaming mane and tail of the horse. It's excellent. Page. Shining the light. There's the 10 being oppressed, but moving on. And here's this one is a little bit less clear that we've got someone wounded. He's got a, a thing tied around his head, but it's kind of hard to see. So I would always, you know, the first thing that comes to me with this card is just setting boundaries and protecting. There's the eight. This is kind of fucking with my head that they go in backwards order. Obviously, these things are in flight. The seven. Look at the strength there. The six. Victorious. And these guys look like they are, they're not battling each other. They're sparring. Look here how this wand comes like this close to this guy. So it's kind of like they're just sort of practicing and sparring with each other. I love the dancers here. And look at, this is the guy from The Hangman. Look at the white shirt, white puffy shirt and the red tights. And we actually have ballet slippers. So this shows two people moving together. And this is the one where are the ships going out? Are they coming in? Who knows? You get to decide. Mm. And this, if that isn't a twig and berries, meat and two veg, I don't know what is. And I love, love, love that description, that image, you know. There's the King of Cups. And the Queen of Cups. And again, you see, you know, instead of just face on, you've got to the side, you've got three quarters, different directions. There's the knight on a seahorse. And look at the mane of sea foam. I'm going to have to go back and look at the knights now. And there's the page. Look at the little artist palette here. Inspiration, the arts. There's the ten, the happy family. And again, close up. The wish card. Happy, happy. Here's walking away. the seven. Illusion and indecision. Here's the six. Handing on memories. Childhood. The five. Grieving a loss. The four. Withdrawal. Disappointment. Um, dissatisfaction. Celebration. And again, the ballet slippers. And then there's the relationship. Those two are stuck as well. And I love, love, love that is of cups. Now, before I bless my deck, I've got the thing here that Drew sent me. He sent me a question. Let's get it blessed, and then I shall read your question. I'm using cedar now. I'm out of sage. And cedar does every bit as well. It is one of the major cleansing herbs. If you think about it, uh, way back when, when there were no synthetic fiber clothes, um, women would have a cedar chest to keep things that were made of wool because moths would come in and eat them and the cedar kept away the bugs. So by air and fire, be purified and charged. By water and earth, be blessed and made whole. And by sound, may the spirit awaken. And guides and guardians, allies and ancestors, thank you for being here. Please uh, do your best to express my gratitude to Drew. And I offer you fresh water and I offer you the fire of Azrael. 
to wake up the spirit of divination. All right, let's let's have a shuffle because you know the one thing I noticed is that uh, the newer one, mm, maybe not. Huh? Okay. I guess yes. The newer one is just slightly bigger that way. So we shall see. Oh. Hell yes. And you know, I'm kind of surprised that Llewellyn, I have a couple Llewellyn decks in these same kind of boxes. One of them is a legend, the Arthurian. One of them is the Witch's Tarot. And um, I don't know why they don't have more decks in that smaller format. Now it seems like everything comes in the big boxes. And that's a shame. Except when you get the big book with it. And I wonder, I don't think Robin Wood comes in a kit like that. It's, okay, they don't want to be shuffled like that anymore. Now, Drew's question is, where is the best path forward for me with my spirituality? And for those of you that don't know what's going on here, there's a, an Amazon wish list below. And if you purchase me a deck off that list, and there's a place where you can, you know, send me a little note. If you want to send your name, you can. But if you have a question, send it to me, and I will read for you on my unboxing video. So this is the... <laughs> It's chunky. I am going to riffle one more time. Please allow me. Please allow me to riffle shuffle you one more time. And why? What's going on there? Hmm. I think I just have to take it a little more slowly. There's like a, do you see that? Did I bend you wrong? There's one card that wants to separate itself from everybody else, and it's Temperance. What the heck? One more slow riffle. And then I ask my guides to help me answer the question, what is the best path forward with your spirituality? I'm going to do um, ten cards. Okay. Well, we'll take them three at a time and see how it goes. If we can't get a clear answer from the first three, we keep going. I gotta say, when I'm shuffling, they don't, they wanna come off in chunks rather than, you know, individuals. I think that's just gonna be a matter of use. Okay, where is the best path for it? All right, they're telling me to stop. For Drew. That's funny, that card kept showing itself to me when I was shuffling. Like literally, I do and see it. Okay, so we have the Four of Swords, we have the Two of Pentacles, and the Page of Cups. The Four of Swords indicates maybe take a break from wrestling with the question, um, and you know know that you're always on your spiritual path. You are always on the path. Um, your practice of that path and your practice of your beliefs is going to evolve over time for most people anyway. I know mine is very different from, you know, what it was even a couple of years ago. And, you know, sometimes window dressing falls away when you've absorbed the essence of whatever practice you're doing, because the four of swords here talks about a rest and a break. Then we have two of pentacles. So we have some decisions to weigh and the decisions are practical. Um, maybe even monetary. So financial considerations can come in to a spiritual path when you're looking at perhaps taking some training, um, like, you know, going for a Reiki attunement or something like that, or taking a class in tarot, astrology, uh, whatever. Um, but there's definitely a weighing of options. Page of Cups talks about self-study and connecting with our own inspiration. I pointed out that artist's palette. 
it says that this is a creative process, all right? And that you are at the beginning of discovering some things about yourself at a very deep level. It's cups, so it is emotional. You know, he's looking at this fish inside the cup. This uh, card is often an indicator of um, doing something uh, like meditation, something that takes you into that watery realm, that trance state, that uh, fluid, you know, connection with all that is. So it might look like one of the choices is take a break from something that's going on and the other one is to kind of dive deeper personally and they don't have to be either or this can say take a break from something maybe external and time to dive more deeply internally got a lot of choices Ooh, look at the courts coming up on that side all right so seven of cups again it looks like there's a lot of ruminating going on. I could do this, or I could do this. The page of um, cups up there is talking about connecting with your um, with your intuitive sense, but more your psychic sense. Psychic is a is a function of the physical of the body. Um, so it's time to kind of sit with. Your, just your feelings. How do you feel about things? You know, what do you feel attracted to or not attracted to? Seven of Cups just says maybe there are too many options coming right below the Four of Swords that we need to pare down on the options that we're um, looking at. You know, eight in the middle says practice, 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 practice. And Knight of Swords, hmm. The Knight of Swords can talk about really going at things with great gusto. He can also talk about uh, being kind of pissed off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read here. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, yeah. Knight, a soldier, heroic, brave, righteous anger triumph over an opposition a practical solution to a problem so it's i think it's reiterating the the um reliance or the trust in your own feelings how you feel about things let's keep going and see what plays out but eight of pentacles in there just says hands on get your get the tools in your hands so maybe instead of um i don't know if you're even considering you know new things but instead of something new just look at getting tools in your hands and practicing and because the artist palette came up there I want to say that um, and the star would certainly reiterate this very strongly um, if you have a creative bent if you are an artist that the medium you use can be a vehicle of spirituality a vehicle to encounter spirit through connecting with the muse, allowing something else to take uh, the wheel and express itself through you. Okay, we've got the Emperor, the King of Pentacles, and the Three of Rods. All right. Um, so the Emperor is where the buck stops. It says the ultimate decision is yours. You decide. There's a lot of ways to go. Ultimately, it's your choice. We're weighing and balancing, you know, okay, I feel like I have to make a choice. But this is saying maybe you don't have to make a choice. You just need to make a thing, <laughs> you know, create something. King of Pentacles at the bottom says I have the ability to deal with my resources, um, it can talk about resources not being an issue. This is authority over direction, authority over everything. This is authority over material resources. This says uh, something needs to be launched. Launch a project. Put something into practice. Hold on. 
stop waiting until you reach a to validate your own spirituality and your own spiritual path. Ooh, and then we've got the magician here. So what do we need to create? We need to create magic. Um, all right. The power is in your hands. I think we, we're getting a bit impatient with things. If there's been a project launched in the past, this card, because I tend to look at past on this side, moving into future. Um, so if we look at it that way, the past, we're taking a break, can't decide, too many options, and then decision. So the emperor can also talk about a decision being made. Present says, still kind of, you know, weighing and balancing just a couple of things now. And it's time to get your hands on the tools and get so, so very practical. Put it into practice on the most foundational ground level. And then future would be bringing some meditation in, spending some time letting your guides speak to you. Um, this can talk about things just moving forward in a rush, a new understanding of things, new information. And then this can say that ships come in. It can also talk about launching a project, but I have always more often read that card as the ships are coming in. So success. And then we've got magician at the end. We only had two majors here. So I wanna take the breakdown. The magician at the end says you have all the basic tools you need in order to go into order to level up, in order to manifest, in order to create what it is you want. So my question to you is what it what is it? Um, okay, the best path forward for me. With spirituality, the best path forward, I believe, is practice. Always practice. Um, putting your beliefs into practice. Doing a tune-up to look and see, does my lifestyle, the way I live my life, reflect what I truly believe inside? Or what I say I believe? And if your outer life doesn't reflect what you say you believe, maybe that's because you don't really believe it because belief system is more powerful than anything. Wow. Okay, there's a lesson for me as well. So the magician just says, I mean, this is, these cards are empowering because it's saying the buck stops here and the magician says you have the power. He's the master of the resources. So let's do the breakdown now. Swords, we have one, two. Cups, we have one, two, two. Majors, we have two. Pentacles, we have one, two, three. And wands, we have one. <laughs> so everything is balanced. You know, when you say all things being equal, all things are pretty equal here. The, the strong line down in the present, though, is all pentacles. So I think in the present, we are definitely focused on the material. Um, or focused, you know, finally on practical application of things. So maybe it is time to look at bridging that gap between my spirituality is here and my actual life is here and looking at how your spirituality and your belief system is manifesting itself in the present in practical terms, in measurable terms. And if you can't measure it, then maybe it's time to ask, okay, what would be a way I could measure where I'm at on my path? Okay. Um, yeah, I always say when people are like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm off my path. I can't find my path. I can't find my path. And my answer to that has always been look down. If you're trying to find your path, look down. You are on it. You have never been off of it. Sometimes we can um, take little side trips into toxicity, into old patterns, um, into neurosis, into um, trauma, you know, repeating of trauma or behaviors that were instilled because of trauma. But that is part of the path. That's part of the path. Even when I was 20 and went from being a baby witch and finally learning, learning there were witches and that was a thing because I knew I was a witch my whole life. Um, and 
you know, had been starting to study, even when I took a hard right turn and became a Catholic to get married the first time, it was still my path. I threw myself into Catholicism. I reconnected with goddess in a way that was, you know, all around the culture, accepted in our culture. And then I, um, and I practiced very well. And then the hypocrisies started to show themselves and I took the essence of my connection with goddess and the wonderful feel of ritual and left the church behind, you know? So everything is part of your path. If you can't see what the next thing is, maybe it's just time to be here. Because again, that Knight of Swords talks about some impatience and let's get on with it already. So another question to ask yourself is what am I expecting? What am I expecting of myself? What is it that's making me think I'm, I have to be somewhere else than where I am? Okay. Gosh, I hope that helped you. There was a lot. There were a lot of little <laughs> tracks there. But, you know, overall, everything is very evenly balanced for you right now. If anything, practicality, practical steps, practice, <laughs> practical practice is, um, you know, the focus or the very slight slant. The shortfall is in wands, which is in the creative all right. So I would say more than creating something new now, which I was saying in the beginning, I think now it's time to get very practical to answer those questions for you to really more clearly define your own spirituality and what your expectations are of your spiritual path and of you on that spiritual path. Okay. All right. Again, I hope that that answered your question, please let me know, Drew, down below. And if you have additional questions, let me know those too. I am absolutely thrilled to do a follow-up, all right, and have a conversation with you in the comments. Again, thank you all of my subscribers. I'm over 2,000 subscribers now, crossed a milestone. Um, thank you for everyone that contributes to this channel by donating. There are links down below or joining my Patreon, which is just a $3 a month support. And then you contribute to choosing a deck that I buy every month. Um, I really appreciate all of you and I'm so grateful for you being here. Until I see you next time, like subscribe if you haven't already and uh take care this is luna blessed be